welcome to the ninth session on infinite series this is part of basic real analysis today we are going to talk about the so called cauchy product of two infinite series we will give start with the motivation and in terms of polynomials and again in terms of two infinite series which are very familiar to us okay and then prove a similar result about the cauchy product of two infinite series okay when a cauchy product of two convergent series is convergent okay a simpler result is what we are going to do and that is more than enough for all practical purpose and in fact the two examples which we are going to discuss before the starting of even the definition of cauchy product okay are actually applications of that so i hope you will appreciate that and those who of you who want to really master analysis i would suggest after this video please hunt for my video on cauchy product and merton's theorem okay that proves a result which is more general than what i'm going to do today and that teaches a very good important trick the so called what i call the divide and conquer trick okay and it's a non trivial thing so if you really want to master analysis you should follow this video by that on cauchy product and merton's theorem okay you can search for it my youtube or in the list of videos pdf file you will get it okay so let us get started yeah so uh based on my lecture today okay the way it goes i plan to write it as an article okay because the the proof which i'm going to present today i didn't include in my book in our book okay so i thought it's worth recording for beginners it will be a nice thing also so i plan to write it as an article after this record okay the okay because usually i write my notes after i give lectures unlike other teachers because when i lecture i think of something new and i find out students difficulties the, okay i explain that on the way then those things get incorporated as a set of notes okay so therefore it will be much more user friendly student friendly okay that's the reason okay right so let us get started suppose i have two polynomials okay p of x equal to let us say a not plus a one x plus a m x power m. m and q of x which is b not plus b one x plus b n x power n not necessarily the, the same degree right we will assume a m and a b n are not zero so that they are of degree m and n that's that's not important now you know what is we get a new product p q of x okay this is something like c not plus c one of x plus c m plus n of x power m plus n okay what is c not c not is a not plus b not then what do i do i multiply them out using distributive law a not plus a one x plus a m x power m plus times b not plus b one x b two x squared plus b n x power n and i multiply this out then a not into b not will come plus a not into b one x plus a one x into b not a one b not x right and so on the next one will be i have a not into x square a not into b two x squared plus a one x into b one x plus a two x squared into b not okay and so on this you must have learned in your high school but the point i want to write it therefore it's a not b not of x now take x common this is a not b1 plus a1 b not of sorry no x here x plus this will be a not b2 plus a1 b1 and a2 b not into x squared and so on therefore this is i can write it as c not plus c1 x plus c 
m plus m x power m plus 1 where what is ck? ck is how do I do that? a naught bk plus a1 bk minus 1 plus o1 and ak b naught which is same as saying in a shortened notation okay ar bs where r plus s equal to k do you understand this yeah so this is what i want you to remember so pause in case you you are rusted please go through this okay right so let us take a digression now let us look at fix a real number x in r let us look at if you want think of it as a fixed number okay then let us look at a this one right this is a series infinite series right i want to know about this convergence okay there are very many ways of doing but the obvious thing is to look at the ratio test therefore it's going to be a n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial into n factorial by a power n that is going to be a if you want to put everything is modulus okay because ratio test etc involves positive numbers so i have to do that so therefore it's going to be mod a by n plus 1 right so this goes to 0 therefore it's less than 1 hence okay a power n by n factorial n greater than or equal to 0 is conversion for every real number r right therefore i can think of as a function x going to summation x power n by n factorial n greater than or equal to 0 this function is what is denoted by e power x or exponential of x okay this is a function from r to r is that clear all of you must have seen it in your calculus course right okay now the most important thing fact about property of exponential function is if i have two real numbers x and y okay e power x plus y is e power x into e power y okay now i want to know whether i can prove this prove this using our definition right this is a question now let's try to understand what is the left hand side e power x plus y that is equal to x plus y to the power m by n factorial n greater than or equal to 0 is that clear yeah right but this if you want i can again do that this is n greater than or equal to 0 this is going to be something like n choose r x power r and y power n minus r the whole thing by 1 by n factorial and this is r from 0 to n this i am using binomial theorem for integral indices the bracket thing is nothing other expansion of x plus y by 1 is that okay right but let's look at what how do i make sense out of the e power x and d power y this is summation x power n by n factorial make it m so that i know that well, maybe r okay x power r by r factorial r greater than or equal to 0 times summation y power s by s factorial s is 0 greater than or equal to 0 this is a product right now based on our earlier thing just write let's write it x x squared by 2 factorial plus x power of r by r factorial etc into 1 plus y by y squared by 2 factorial plus y power s by s factorial etc so when i multiply okay i can collect the coefficients of x therefore it's going to be 1 plus okay now let us write down the nth what is the coefficient of x power n 
sorry, x power r into y power s, right? Now let's look at this. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay, this is just uh, this y is little above, it should be just uh, below. Alright, so this is going to be right. I have to collect the coefficient of x power r, but remember when r plus s, okay, therefore I am going to get terms of the kind x power r by r factorial and y power s by s factorial, then collect these things where r plus s equal to n. Right, and then this is going to be n is greater than equal to 0. Do I accept it? This is by using the, the product of polynomials. Think of this as, inf it's actually so called power series, but think of as an infinite degree polynomial. When I try to multiply this out, I will get. Right? Now, let us see. So, this exactly looks similar. Look at, compare this and compare this. They look similar except something fact. Now let us look at what is n choose r. n choose r by definition is n factorial by r factorial and n minus r factorial. That is n factorial by r factorial and s factorial. Right? Therefore, this fellow I can rewrite as n greater than or equal to 0. Okay? r plus s equal to n. I can write it as x power r into y power s. And this is n choose r by 1 by n factor, 1 by n factor into n choose r. Okay, n choose r by n factorial. Do you understand that? This by n factorial will be this. Yeah? But what is this? This is n greater than or equal to 0. 1 by n factorial is common. Therefore, this is going to be r plus s equal to n of n choose r x power r into y power s, but this is nothing other than x plus y power n. So, we got it. Yeah. Now, notice that something very interesting. Okay, this is just, a, you may think it's a formal manipulation. Many teachers may also think it's a formal manipulation, but there is something very interesting. What I am saying, I am defining e power x and e power y by this method where, okay, the nth term, nth term is x power r into y power s by r factorial s factorial and r running from 0 to n. This is my nth term. You are you following? Okay, this is my definition of e power x into e power y. With that, what I get is, I get it is nothing other than, okay. So, with that definition, what I am getting is, This is my nth term. This is nothing other than n greater than or equal to 0 is x plus y whole power n by n factorial. And I know this is convergent. Okay, for any real number t, t power n by n factorial well, as n greater than or equal to 0, that infinite series is convergent. Therefore, this is convergent. Therefore, what do you think I have proved? I have shown that if I define the multiplication of u power x into u power y, by this method, this is exactly like what the way I did polynomials, right? Then this Cauchy product of two, this product of two infinite series is convergent. Not only it converges, where does it converge to? It converges to e power x plus y. Therefore, I have proved e power x into e power y is e power x plus y. This is actually a proof. We proved it. There is no manipulation. Okay. Except what is involved? I define this is the definition. This is the definition of two series. E power x is a series, e power y is a series. What do I mean by the product of these two series? Okay. And okay, please understand. We will come to a more general result now. Okay, so suppose I have an infinite series An for the for Cauchy product, one usually starts with n greater than or equal to 0 because you can see there is a reason. 
because of polynomials and all that and b power r. Okay, let me write it a power r and b power s s greater than or equal to 0. Then the Cauchy product is a summation cn where cn is a0 bn plus a1 bn minus 1 plus a2 bn minus 2 plus an b0. So, this is nothing other than summation a r b n minus r r from 0 to n. So, how many terms are there? There are n plus 1 terms. Okay, this is not minus c n, this is just c n. Right? So, this c n is called the Cauchy product. This series is called the Cauchy product of summation AR and summation BS. If you want to think of it as a summation AN and BN, okay, there is no problem. Is it clear? Is the Cauchy product. And how is this? How did I motivate this definition of CN? By looking at polynomials, I also looked at the exponential series. Do you see that? I just tried to multiply, therefore, the powers of x and y add them add together to give n. That's the idea, right? I collected these are all what? I collect x power r and y power s. I collected r and s so that the the sum of the powers r plus s is always equal to n. That's the way I club them together. Right? Therefore, when I have x power r by r factorial, here a y power s by s factorial. Okay, when I r plus s equal to n, I collect them and collect all such things. So, you can see where does it uh, leave from r equal to where s equal to n minus r. Okay, therefore, it's only r is from 0 to n. Therefore, n plus 1 terms are there. You understand? Please pause, review, proceed again. Because many students have problem with this because the teachers do not motivate, simply write it. But now I motivated two ways. One is polynomials and second one is the power series for exponential function. Okay, we actually now proved e power x and e power y is e power x plus y except what is meant by e power x times e power y. e power x is a power series, e power y is an infinite series. What is meant by the product of these two series? Once we make the correct definition, we proved it e power x and e power y is e power x plus y. These are the subtle things you should understand. Okay. Modern mathematics is not only manipulation of symbols, one should also understand the concepts. Okay, good. Now let us look at one more example before we go to the main result. This is example 3. Okay, remember when mod x is less than 1, call it r equal to mod x, we know r power n is 0 to infinity, that is r greater than or equal to 0. This is convenient. <coughs> Sorry, this is conversion. Let me see whether I shared the screen here. This is conversion, right? So, since this is absolutely conversion, that means summation mod x power n, n greater than or equal to 0 is conversion. That means the series is absolutely conversion. And hence, the series x power n is conversion. And we had also seen x power n, n greater than or equal to 0 is 1 by 1 minus x. All these things we had already seen, right? In the first one or two lectures on in the series, we had already seen that. Now, what I want to do is, I want to do something very interesting. Think, so, remember, x lies in the interval minus 1 to plus 1. Therefore, I can think of this as a function you have from minus 1 to plus 1 to r, where x going to x power n, n greater than or equal to 0, but this is nothing other than this. Even though I wrote this infinite series, this is nothing other than 1 minus x. Therefore, the function is actually x going to 1 by 1 minus x. Do you understand this? Yeah, x going to the infinite series, summation x power n, geometric series, summation x power n, where n is greater than or equal to 0. But we know it converges. The infinite series converges. Converges to its sum is 1 by 1 minus x. Therefore, x going to the infinite series, geometric series, summation x power n is nothing other than the function x going to 1 by 1 minus x. Do all of you understand? Now, what do I know about the function f? f is differentiable. And what is f dash x? This has, you know, 1 by 1 minus x whole squared. 
but this is same as 1 by 1 minus x times 1 by 1 minus x. Yeah, I just want to motivate just to learn to play with this. Most often, okay, earlier days, these are the kind of concrete things which people played with and understood what is happening and abstracted as a theorem. But nowadays, okay, we put the other way around. We prove a theorem and arrive at the, uh, give applications for this. Okay. Okay. Do you understand this? Therefore, you can wonder something. Okay. So, what will be 1 minus x into 1 minus x? 1 by 1 minus x. This is nothing other than x power r, r greater than or equal to 0 into x power s, s greater than or equal to 0. Right. So, now I would like to test, suppose it, I use this product as a Cauchy product. Okay, do I get, are you following, do I get 1 by 1 minus x whole squared, is it equal to this, are you following, this is formal, 1 by 1 minus x is this, 1 by 1 minus x is the geometry is x power s. When I use a Cauchy product, okay, I want to know it converges and does it converge to 1 by 1 minus x squared. Right? Okay. Now, let us look at what is the Cauchy product. Cauchy product is 1 plus x plus x power r and so on into 1 plus x, x squared plus x power s and so on. So, what will be the Cauchy product? Therefore, it will be x power r into x power n minus r, r from 0 to n, but all these things is nothing other than x power n. This is n plus 1 times x power n. Therefore, my c n is going to be this. Do all of you understand? Yeah? Right. Therefore, the Cauchy product is summation this is infinite series x power right now you can ask whether this converges right i know this converges for mod x less than 1 both the series converge right it converges to 1 by 1 minus x this also converges to 1 by 1 minus x right therefore the product should converge to 1 by 1 and 1 minus x squared therefore i have to know whether it is equal to so, I would like to know whether it converges, but that is very easy. What do you think? Here, you can ask for the ratio test, for example. What is the ratio test? Therefore, n plus 1 by mod x power n by n by mod x power n minus 1, that is n plus 1 by n and mod x, that goes to mod x, which is less than 1. Therefore, this is conversion. Right? Therefore, the Cauchy product of x power r, r greater than or equal to 0 times x power s, s greater than or equal to 0, okay, is summation n plus 1, x power n, n greater than or equal to 0, is conversion. Therefore, the, okay, right? Therefore, I expect the sum to be 1 by 1 minus x squared. That's fine. But there is something very interesting. Let us look at f of x equal to x power n, n greater than or equal to 0. That is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x power n plus 1, right? Now let me think of this as a polynomial. Each of the term you differentiate. The derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of x is 1, the derivative of 2x x squared is 2x and so on. The derivative of n x power n is n into x power n minus 1 and so on. Therefore, the general pattern is n into n plus 1 into x power n when n is greater than equal to 0. When n equal to 0, I get 1. When n equal to 1, I get 2x. And when equal to n, n minus 1, I get n. In, okay, this will be n plus 1 into next term will be n plus 1 into x power n. So, when n equal to n, I get that term. Are you following? Yeah. So, what we found is something very interesting. What we found is, look at f of x 
equal to summation x power n, n greater than equal to 0, that is equal to 1 by 1 minus x and f dash of x therefore is 1 by 1 minus x whole squared and this is nothing as the Cauchy product of x power r into x power s where r is greater than equal to 0, s is greater than equal to 0. This is a Cauchy product. But we also found out this is nothing other than term wise differentiation of x power n. This Cauchy product is nothing other than this. But this series is nothing other than term wise differentiation. Deri term wise derivative of 1 plus x plus x squared plus okay, x power n. Okay. So, do not get intimidated. These things are never done in a textbook. Even in my book, I didn't do that. I just do Cauchy product, prove the theorem and as a, an application, I show that. But these kinds of things, let me again repeat, I you, may, you might have heard me many times. The basic trick is do not feel intimidated. If you understand 30%, 40%, you are on the right track. That's enough. Review it again. Okay. And you go further. As you go to the next section or something else. Okay. When you revisit it, you will see you understand 90 or 100%. Okay. Do not worry about I, I didn't. There are a lot of vague things that are more difficult, so I don't understand them. Okay, that is the attitude many students have. That's very, very wrong attitude. Don't do that. Okay, try to understand, get the feeling for the subject. Feel as though that you are a child playing with a toy. You play with it. Slowly, you will get the mastery over the toy. Okay, that is the spirit. Yeah, okay. Now, let's prove the theorem which I want to prove. Let me make sure the recording is going on. All right. Okay. So, the theorem, see now I have a n, n greater than or equal to 0 and b n, n greater than or equal to 0, assume both are convergent. Then let c n be the Cauchy product. Question is, can I conclude c n is convergent and if so, is the sum of cn equal to the Cauchy product of this? See? Okay, the sum of this series. Sorry, sorry. This is a this is a sum, and this is this is the sum of the series summation n. This is the sum of the series summation b n. The product of the sums. Okay, that is the sum of the Cauchy product. Is it equal to product of the sums? Okay, sum of the okay. This is a Cauchy product is infinite series, so you can talk. About, if it converges, I can talk about the sum. So what do I want? The sum is nothing else than the product of the sums of the individual two series. Please understand the logic. In general, it's false. False. Okay. Summation A, C, A, C, N may not converge. Okay. There are easy examples. Okay. I don't want to get into that. Something like oh, minus 1 to the power n by square root n, etc. By alternating series test, you do all those things. You can show that it is going to be this is conversion, but the Cauchy product will be essentially non-conversion. Okay. I don't want to get into that. Please do all such things. Okay. Right. Oh no, sorry, that's not the thing. I'm sorry. Okay, I take back. Okay, let's not worry about it. In general, it may not converge. Leave it at that. I cannot immediately think of a counter example, but uh, that's more not important. But the theorem I want to prove is the following. Suppose a n and summation b n are absolutely convergent.
right let this summation cn be the Cauchy product of summation an and summation bn notice that when i say these are absolute convergent what does it mean mod an some the infinite series summation mod an is convergent and the infinite series mod bn is convergent but what are we talking about we are talking about the Cauchy product of summation an summation bn not mod a summation mod an summation mod bn okay then you want to say summation cn is absolutely convergent and hence convergent right therefore the sum makes sense this sum is nothing other than the sum product of these two series if you call this series sum as yes this series as t this this is convergent absolutely convergent therefore it will converge call the sum as u then u equal to st this is the proof is the theorem clear statement at least yeah okay now we will go to the proof okay All right This is how I, I let us continue the proof. This is how I have to sometimes miss the entire episode without this or without starting the recording, etc. Anyway, so let's go back to the proof, right? So, the okay, mostly the proof is somewhat uh, uh, algebraic in nature. Let us look at what is CN. CN is okay okay let, let us look so let sn be the partial sum tn be the partial sums and un be the partial sums ck k equal to 0 tn but this is what c0 plus c1 plus cn right but what does this involve you can see that this is a0 b0 plus a naught b1 plus a1 b naught okay next one will be a naught b2 plus a1 b1 i'm just writing the, this thing so that you know slowly you will get used to it okay and what will be c3 just cn a naught bn see notice that r plus s should add up to n a1 bn minus 1 plus a2 bn minus 2 plus an minus 1 b1 plus an b naught right therefore do you see something interesting this is nothing other than ar into bs where remember r and s are always positive so i, will, I don't say such things but r plus s is less than equal to n all these fellows will be there this is the first observation i want you to make do you follow that okay pause review proceed make sure that you understand this this is going to be very crucial for what we want to do Based on that, I'm going to define something. Therefore, let's look at okay, two C subsets of things. This is set of all R S and S in Z plus cross Z plus. Remember, for me, Z plus is set of non-negative integers, integers greater than or equal to zero. Which what condition? R plus S is less than or equal to n. Right? So in view of this, what is my say U n? un is summation ck k equal to 0 tn this is nothing other than arbs so that r plus s is less than equal to n therefore this is nothing other than summation where r and s vary over a n of arbs that is the reason why we wanted to look at it that way how many of you understand this make sure that you follow this quickly right okay and the entire thing is remember essentially i want to prove un converges to st but st where does it converge to s and tn therefore i have to look at what is s and tn what is s n that is summation ar r from 0 tn and tn is bs s plus 0 tn understand therefore this this one s and tn is a or R 0 to N 
and B as S is from 0 to N. Okay, therefore this is A R and B as where R and S, what does it leave? R and S, something very interesting. R can be 0 to N and S is also 0 to N. Okay, therefore this I can write it as A R R 0 to N summation B S S equal to 0 to N, 0 to N as summation A or B S where over R and S in B N. What is B N? See B N is set of all R comma S M Z plus direct times Z plus so that 0 is less than equal to R is less than equal to N, 0 is less than equal to S less than equal to N. Do you understand this? Okay, that is why I call it purely more except at the very one or two places what is involved is purely algebraic argument. Are you following this? Sure. Uh, let us again quickly recall therefore my U N is A or B S where R and S lie in A N. Okay. And S and T N is A or B S where it is R is lie B N. Right. Next, what is the relation between A n and B n? Remember, A n has ordered pair R plus R and S, but R plus is less than equal to n. Whereas B n has R can run from zero to n. S also can run to zero to n. Therefore, this happens. A n is contained in B two n. Is that clear? Okay. Next step is: Is B n contained in something? A something? That is very clear. This contain a two n because what is a two n? A two n is set of all r comma s in z plus z plus so that r plus z then equal to n two n, right? Now to start with any r s s in b n, then r plus s r is less than equal to n. S is also less than equal to n. Therefore, r plus s will be less than equal to two n. Therefore, every r s here is an element of a to m. You understand? These are all the things we need now. Make sure, pause, review, proceed. As I said, this is purely formal algebraic thing. And remember, everywhere we are dealing with finite thing. Okay? There is no confusion, no infinite series as of now. Okay? Now, first, we want to prove, okay, summation mod C n is conversion. Right? Therefore, are you following? Okay. How do I prove that? Okay. This is mod C1 plus mod C2 plus mod C. Yeah. This is what I want to show is conversion. Yeah. Right. How do I prove that? So, let us look at. So, mod C1. Okay. Mod a naught b naught plus mod a one b naught plus a sorry a naught b one plus a one b naught plus and so on. Right? But this is less than equal to mod a naught mod b naught plus mod a naught mod b one plus mod a one mod b naught plus the last one will be mod a naught mod b n plus by I am using triangle inequality mod a one mod b n minus one plus mod a n mod b naught right but what is this this is nothing other than mod a r into mod b s where r and s belong to b n do all of you agree with that Oh, sorry, AN. Right? But AN is contained in BN, therefore this is less than equal to R and S in BN of mod AR into mod BS. Because these are all non-negative terms, BN contains lot more non-negative terms, therefore the summation over mod AN will be less than equal to summation over mod BN. Right? But we know what this is. This is nothing other than 
mod a or r equal to 0 t n into s equal to 0 t n mod b s. These are the things we did. I did with a r and b s, but they are any two numbers. So instead you place that. Is it clear? Right. Now up to that this algebra. Up to this this algebra. Now comes analysis. Now let us look at what is my assumption mod a n or mod a r or greater than equal to 0 is conversion. This infinite series is conversion. And what is this? This is mod a r or greater than equal to 0 equal to L e b of summation mod a r r from 0 t n as L e b varies over capital N. Right? Therefore, this object is less than or equal to summation mod a r r greater than or equal to 0. And this is mod b s s greater than or equal to 0. Do you follow that? Therefore, what do you think I have proved? I have proved that mod u1, sorry, mod c1 plus mod cn is less than or equal to r equal to 0 to infinity or see, I am also tempted to write like that mod ar this times summation mod bs is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, these are two finite positive numbers, therefore, this is bounded above. Okay the partial sum of summation mod c n are bounded above. By what number? By this number. Right? Therefore, okay, this series mod c n is convergent. Because this is a series of non negative terms, the partial sums are bounded above, therefore, this is a series of conversion. Do, I, do all of you agree with that? Okay, pause, review, proceed. Therefore, it follows that CN is conversion. Right? So, as usual, let UN be the nth partial sum. And Sn be the nth partial sum of summation Cn, this is the nth partial sum of An, and Tn be the nth partial sum of Bn, etc. Right? So, what I want to show you is so Un should converge to S times T. Suppose Sn converges to S and Tn converges to T, this is summation An, this is summation Bn. Right? I want to prove this. Okay? This is the next trick. The trick is, I already know un is conversion. Do you agree with that? Because, what do I know? Mod cn is conversion. Therefore, that means cn is conversion. Okay. Therefore, un is conversion. Un is also partial sums of this series. Therefore, it's conversion. Right. Therefore, where does it converge? Let us say un converge to u. Right. Therefore, I have to prove u equal to st. Keep that in mind. Since u n converges, therefore look at this subsequence u to n that will also converge to u. If it were true, right? So the trick is I know u n converges to u, right? And I prove 2 n u to n converges to s times t. Now this is u to n is a subsequence of the conversion sequence u n and the subsequent converges to st but the original sequence converges to u therefore what will follow i'll it will follow u equal to st do you understand this okay so now my idea is clear cut so what do i have to do i want to estimate u2n minus sn tn that's it okay if i show this goes to zero then what does it mean u2n will converge to u and s and t n will converge to s and t as n goes to infinity if you want to say that okay therefore u equal to s t will follow do you follow that so i only have to prove this right now what is u to n u to n is a r b s and r and s in a to n right okay now this 
you can write it as okay this is where the trick comes the, again as you can see it's essential algebra okay now analysis is more or less over okay now i want to rearrange the term to get an expression for u2n minus sn tn purely by algebraic manipulation and then understanding what happens to a2n etc etc right okay this is u2n right therefore u2n minus sn tn is a r b s r and s in a2n minus a r okay r equal to 0 tn and b s s equal to 0 tn but this is same as a r b s r and s in a2n but minus a r b s okay r and s in b 2 n uh, this is b n right yeah what is my b n yeah yeah b n is a r and s less than equal to n therefore it's b n okay now you can see that that's why your big board i can see that somewhere i would have kept it elsewhere do you understand that right are you following now i want to estimate this in modulus therefore modulus u2n minus sn tn is less than or equal to right now what do i do yeah so i want to do an estimate now they i have bn tn now this is a slight trickier thing see you see that u2n i have this what i would like to replace is a2n i would like to replace by mod mod ar mod bs all right are you following yeah so i want to do that how will i do that just make sure you understand okay if i know this mod ar mod bs but then i am taking away something okay this has a slight problem so i have to be more careful how many of you understand this thing i cannot just like that do modulus so i have to manipulate something more are you following please listen to me see this one i cannot write r and s in a2n minus summation a r b s and r s in b n i can't do that yeah so i have to be little show some kind of finesse in algebra right this is not true right this cannot uh, sorry this is modulus if you want this cannot ho hold right so i have to be slightly more careful how will i do that so let us look at this so i have u2n minus sn tn modulus equal to modulus a r b s r and s in a2n minus r and s in a r b s right in b n now notice that okay a b n is contained in a2n right therefore the sum a r b s this you can simply say r and s in a2 n minus b n of a r b s in modulus do you understand this right r and s if it's in b n it is in a2 n therefore that will cancel so what are the things i am left with now comes the basic idea now let us look at a2 n is contained in b2 n therefore this is okay first let us do that this is less than equal to r and s in a2 n minus b n into mod a r into mod b s by triangle inequality okay this is where again finite sum triangle inequality but then this is less than equal to r and s in b 2 n minus b n into a r into b s huh. 
Do you understand this? Because B A two n contains A two n, therefore this has lot more terms. Now comes the very interesting thing. This is what is B A what is R n does in B two n mod A R into mod B S. This is nothing other than summation mod A R, right? R R from zero to two n into summation B S S from zero to two n. This pure algebra, please bear with me. Okay, it's all easy. And similarly for B n, right? Therefore, what do you find? You find this is nothing other than summation mod A R R less than equal to two n into S equal to zero to two n mod B S. Okay, minus summation mod A R R this into summation B S S zero to n. Just to make sure you follow all these things, right? But where does this go to? The first term goes to mod A R R greater than equal to zero. This infinite series which converges, and this is mod B S S greater than equal to zero mod. Okay, it converges to this. Okay, this converges to this, and this converges to this. And similarly, where does this converge to? Mod A R R greater than equal to zero. And similarly, where does this converge to? Mod B S S greater than equal to zero. And this minus this, therefore, that converges to zero. So what I have shown, I have shown that mod U T N minus S N T N converges to zero. Right. Therefore, that means u two n minus s n t n converges to zero. Right. But this implies, okay, since u n converges, since u n converges to u, and u two n is sub subsequent, that will also converge to u. Therefore, this converges to u, and s n converges to s. This converges to s n t. That can, okay, equal to zero. That is u equal to s t. Okay, so we prove the result. Go back. You see that the how we manipulated this is very easy. So only last minute again I needed infinite series convergence etc. Right? Now, you, if you want, you can go back to the application which we already proved. I am giving a second proof. E power x into e power y equal to e power x plus y, and term wise. Differentiation of x power n n plus one into x power n is nothing other than one by one minus x squared. Okay, that is the derivative of one by one minus x derivative equal to this. So all these things we have proved now rigorously. Please go through it. Don't be intimidated. I know it could be slightly tough, okay. But go. But remember the pro, the last theorem which I proved is very simple, essentially algebra, okay. Like almost like polynomials. Do with this only twice or thrice. Very easy analysis was involved in that, okay. So we have proved. What have we proved? If I have two absolutely convergent series, then the Cauchy product is also absolutely convergent, and the sum of the Cauchy product is nothing other than the Product of the sums of the original series. Okay, that's the theorem. Okay, there is a much stronger theorem, which is due to Merton, which says if one of them is absolutely convergent, the other is convergent, then the Cauchy product is convergent. We now we cannot claim absolutely convergent; it is convergent, and the sum is product of the sums. Okay, that is in a separate video. If you want to master analysis, I would. Really recommend that video to you. Okay, so we will meet again. This okay with this and Merton theorem, the topic of infinite series is completed. I hope all of you enjoyed. Stay tuned. We will come back with something more.